Hey everybody, um, my name is Colin, and if you don't know, or if you watch my YouTube videos, if you know me on Pier, know me from Half Itch, or wherever you know me from, um, some of you know, some of you don't know, I like to build rods. It's kind of my side business, that's what I do. Um, and today I'm going to be building a Range Shadow 967 cut down for a customer. Um, so I kind of just want to do this little time lapse and talk about what's going on with me and uh, what's going on out in the Gulf and what to be prepared for. As I'm filming this, it is 11:30 at night on February 10th, so it's pretty late. But um, yeah, blackfin tuna on the kayak was pretty fun this year. I was able to get them on the kayak. Uh, as you can see, I've posted a lot of videos about that, but. Um, yeah, I kind of just want to talk to y'all and have this video of me building a rod out in the background. It's nice, calm acoustic music. Maybe just put a, put this video up in the back and relax and let's talk to y'all. So, um, yeah, let's go back, man. Um, I've been fishing the pier. I haven't fished the pier too long, man. I I moved here from freshman year of high school and um, I was never really into fishing. Um. First time I really ever fished was on the pier of Navarre, man. And I remember walking out of Navarre. This was like 2016 and stuff, man. I didn't know what I was doing. It's so overwhelming. So many people doing different things, and um, there's a lot going on. It's just when you get into fishing, man, it's a lot of people give up in that first couple weeks of doing it. You know, because you, you, you really, there's, it just seems so overwhelming. There's just so much. But, um, my first couple years of fishing, I didn't really know anybody. I kind of stuck to myself. I would only really show up on weekends and bef not really before and after school because I didn't drive at the time. So I would really just go on the weekends and I did know how to use a gotcha plug. <laughs> One lure I did know how to use. So yeah, I got a gotcha plug, started catching Spanish and that was cool. A couple years go by. That's pretty much all I do. I don't really do much on the pier. I go on weekends. I think it's really cool. Um, I always see people out there with the van stalls. It was really cool to me. But I got my license my junior year of high school. So about three years into moving here in Florida. And I go out on the pier. This is probably about 2019. Pre-COVID. Right before COVID, um, actually. That... Uh, I think it was November or December of 2019, and that was when I saw my first blackfin tuna. I didn't even know what it was at the time. I remember going to the pier. Just I had my license, so I was like, "Hmm, before school, maybe I'll um, go fish the pier." So I did that, and that first time I went on the pier, they had a blackfin run. I mean, what are the chances of that fish the pier in like a year? And I get my license, and I'm like, "Hey, let's go to the pier before school." I know what I was doing. I had a gotcha plug, and there was probably like four or five people on the pier, and everybody got one. Some people got two. It was just crazy seeing all these people hook up, looking out. These I was so scared. <laughs> everybody was so intense, man, and I I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I just kind of stayed in the corner and kept quiet and got out of people's wave, man, because I was I was scared. I was overwhelmed. But that really uh, that hooked me, man. Um, I really wanted to get into fishing. I started going every morning. <laughs> um, had no clue what I was doing. Um, I went to Half Itch, and I saw people using these white jig heads. I was like, I bet, I wonder if they sell them at Half Itch. Well, come to find out, you got to custom make them. You can't just, like, buy them from a tackle shop. I mean, I guess, kind of. But, like, the shad head most people use for tuna. Um, y'all probably know what I'm talking about. Those are hard to come by. So, yeah, that happened. And I started going to the pier a lot. And then 2020 happened, COVID. So, everything's locked down. Um, can't go to school, you know. That was the last of school, junior year of high school, you know. Crazy. Everybody's stuck at home. And um, I, I was really into video games at the time, so I just played video games there and locked down. I was like, the best couple, couple weeks of my life, <laughs> staying home, playing video games, didn't really think of the pier that much, but, um, 
2020, Pier opens back up. Um, that spring, it was like May or something. I can't remember. Um, I go out there, and I uh, I kind of want to introduce my guys, so I meet some people, meet some really good people, and from then on out to now, that is strictly what I do. I pier fish, man. I love pier fishing. My heart, I'll constantly do it. Ended up buying a van stall and my first custom rod, which was a Rain Shadow 1088, which I recommend to a lot of people as their first rod. It is probably the best all-around rod you can get for the pier. Um, but yeah, that's when the addiction began, man. Ever since probably that day in 2020, you know, I I really got into fishing. At first, it was just like a hey, on weekends. I didn't really care about it, but then now it's like. Oh man, I, I really care about this and I really want to spend a lot of time with it. I got, um, I ended up catching a lot of fish. That to my first, I got me my first jack. I wouldn't say a lot of fish. To me, it meant a lot to me. I got some, my first jack of valves off the pier and I got some tarpon bites and I caught a few tarpon. And then that winter, that next winter after that summer, I caught a blackfin, my first blackfin, um, which was a crazy day. And this was 2020, so this is three years ago. This is before really a whole lot of people knew about it. And it was crazy, man. I caught, a, I caught four fish in 2020, in 2021. So November, December 2020, and then 2021. And yeah, man, that's the Blackfin tuna ever since probably about 2019. Um, they've just showed up here in Navarre, you know, we used to, I guess, hearing from the locals, they used to never catch them like this, it's crazy, so we're gonna fast forward, um, till probably November, I get my Hobie kayak, I had a Hobie passport, which was, is like the, uh, beginner end Hobie, it is, a uh, it's a great kayak, I recommend it to a lot of people that come in the store to, uh, who are looking for a new kayak, uh, to me, I'm a Hobie guy. It's the greatest debate among all fishermen, a kayak fishermen, of which Hobie or Old Town is better. But to me, I'm a Hobie guy. Uh, that's a whole nother rabbit hole. And I have rods falling in the shop. That's awesome. <laughs> um, sorry, but yeah, I'm a Hobie guy. I like Hobie. So I get that Hobie passport, and I'm really... I only really take it out in the sound, man. I'm, I'm honestly kind of scared of the kayak. It frightens me. Um, take it out in the sound, and then a good buddy of mine takes me out in the Gulf for the first time. This is in the fall. I think it's like October or September-ish. And I wasn't thinking much, man. We didn't really catch anything. And I caught... On the way back in, we're going back in because it was slow that afternoon. But I was just kind of getting used to the going offshore because I've never done it before. I caught a mahi. I uh, was on the phone with a friend and I saw something jump at the corner of my eye. I threw uh, a lure at it and lo and behold, it was like a four or five pound mahi. And I know that may not seem big to some of y'all, but like catching a four or five pound mahi here in the Gulf Coast, that close, like not even a mile off land, that's that's pretty decent mahi most we're used to are like little chicken mahis little tiny tiny things but you know this was a my biggest mahi you know and i was freaking i was like whoa what are the chances first day going out i get to catch a sight fish a cool mahi so yeah that happens and then kind of fast forward some more i'm still kind of more into the pier than i would say the kayak we're going into the winter part of 2022 and uh, the blackfin show up. We, I was on the pier the day they caught the first ones of the season. Um, that was cool. <laughs> and I'm hooked again. I'm waking up every morning. A lot of people are into it now. So there's a lot more people on the pier as there were the previous years. And um, so yeah, I get on the pier. And no bites, man. The year before this, let's say, so this is 2020, 2021, I had a rough rough year i lost a lot of fish uh 2021 and then early 2022 i lost a lot of tuna on the pier i only caught one that year but uh yeah and then i just have that kayak the hobie passport um and a buddy i'm good friends with catches him and i'm like hmm maybe maybe i'll just try this kayak thing 
I'll go out and do it. And I go, I invite my coworker. Uh, to, I was like, man, we, we gotta go. My buddy just killed him the day before. I'm like, we gotta go tomorrow. And he's like, all right, let's do it. So we get there and it's er- it's a November day and it's north wind. It's pretty chilly, but it's honestly not bad. And we get out there and I'm telling you, it's pretty much dark. You can barely see. It was kind of cloudy. So you know how it's like, it's a cloudy morning. It, the sun kind of like, I don't know, glows. I don't know how to explain it, but and we see fish skying immediately and I can't tell you we weren't even probably 25 30 feet of water and we were getting eight we're getting eight left and right there's fish jumping everywhere I hook up my buddy hooks up and uh, it's just mayhem <laughs> and I'm hooked man catching these fish off the kayak and having these fish run and scream drag and seeing these fish blow up bait right next to you there's nothing quite like it so i end up catching two that day my coworker got one we go in and ever since that day i've been trying to go on the kayak as much as i possibly can on days that it's flat um i will still always love the pier and would always go on the pier in the winter this is just strictly for the winter by the way in the spring and summer it's just a different story with the pier but in the winter I'm going to try to be on the kayak on the calm days and the pier on the rough days. I ended up catching a lot of fish, man. I, if I try to think of how many fish I caught, tuna, not fish, sorry, tuna I caught on the kayak this year. It's quite a bit. I'm 13 total for pier and kayak. I know that for sure. But yeah, it was great learning curve, man. I really got to learn how to troll and there's a lot of like things that are different from the kayak and pier that you kind of gotta like separate your brain from because you probably sometimes you're just so used to the pier but yeah i got to i ended up loving it man and i loved kayaking out there there was just nothing quite like again get literally hooking a fish hearing it screen drag behind you grabbing your rod fighting this fish gaffing it by herself putting it on the boat having it flopping all over the place it's it's pretty surreal and as you can see that some of my videos I, i'm pretty excited about it but uh, yeah that's enough about tuna man um i know it's been pretty fun for a lot of people uh, i'm probably gonna post this on facebook so a lot of people from the facebook group might watch this and if you're listening to up to this point thank you um, I appreciate it. I hope um, this is entertaining. But yeah, now we're going into spring. It's February 10th, and that water temp has been pretty warm. I'm calling for maybe an early spring. We've already seen some black drum and redfish, and there's been quite a, some pompano moving through. Which I know there is pompano kind of year round, but I don't know, man. It's it's getting uh, it's getting a little springy. <laughs> And obviously with spring comes cobia. And cobia is that still that one fish I've yet to catch off the pier. Um, that and a sailfish. But cobia is my number one priority. I've tried for him. Um, this will be the fourth year. Yes. Yes, this will be my fourth cobia season. This will be my fourth cobia season trying for him. I've caught a short that's about it. A short is a illegal fish, so it's undersized limit. I had to throw it back. But that's the goal, man. A cobia, it takes a lot of time and dedication. I don't know if a lot of kayakers know this, but you got to stand on that pier 8 to 10 hours, staring at the water. It's It sucks. But, you know, that's what you got to do. And that's what it takes to catch one. It takes time and dedication. And that's why I feel like it's so sought after. Just the difficulty of catching these fish is unreal. It's you gotta, you just gotta be so patient that it, it's almost painful. Just sitting on the pier, standing, your legs burning, your eyes hurting, just staring at the water. But you know that's what it's all about. You get to see a lot more fish in spring too. We get a big black drum migration that not a lot of people know about, and you get to catch black drum where they come in wads of 100 to 200 big big fish coming down the beach sucking down crabs sand fleas whatever black drum meat <laughs> but it's spring man pompano are coming i love catching pompano 
But I'm about tired of winter, man. <laughs> the blackfin are fun, but it's it's about time to get into spring and summer, man. Spring is a good time. You got a lot of fish moving through here in the Gulf. Got get that water temp rising. Gonna start seeing some redfish on the flats here. It's exciting times. And I am really excited, man. I got a lot of time on my hands this year. And I'm ready to use that. Um, I want to make a lot of good videos for you guys. Um, kind of showing... My goal for my YouTube channel is I want to show some stuff that not maybe not a lot of people do. And get da get dangerous with it. I wanted to... As you can see with some of my Blackfin videos, I wanted to take my tackle to the limits. I wanted to catch fish on light tackle. I caught the past six tuna on the kayak on 15 pound braid. And to me, that's really cool. It's, um, I want to do stuff that maybe not a lot of people are wanting to do or afraid to do. Um, I want to catch some fish on the fly on the beach. I don't really see too many people fly fishing off the beach here in Navarre, but I think it's a very plausible thing. There's going to be, hopefully, I'm going to do some cobia fishing videos off the beach. You know, that's a very, that's like entering the lottery. But, um, just cruising the beach with some buddies and trying to look for redfish, just walking. Do Definitely want to do a lot more beach walking this spring. But then we go into quite literally my favorite part of the year, which is, uh, summer. And then summer, it comes tarpon. We get a big, big tarpon migration here in the Gulf of Mexico. And from the past couple of years... It's been getting better and better each year, which is very, very exciting. Tarpon is by far my number one favorite fish of all time. The tarpon here, it's standing on a pier and seeing these schools come from hundreds of hundreds of yards away and throwing a swim bait at them, leading the fish, seeing these fish, these monster fish coming up and eating your swim bait and flashing their scales and nearly blinding you with how hard they eat you and they just smack your rod and run and jump there's nothing nothing even comes close to f how fun tarpon fishing i consider it its own category when can people compare how fun fish are you can't compare tarpon there's nothing even that comes close as our tarpon fishery down here it has gotten really popular it is incredibly incredibly fun so i'm ex super excited for that um that's gonna be in summer but definitely definitely gonna be on the kayak and trying to get, get some from the kayak um it might be a little difficult um it's got to be perfect days but it'll be the summer you know we can always troll for kings or on um, when snappers open we can go for some snapper so that's gonna be a uh, it's gonna be entertaining spring and summer i'm really excited i have high hopes um pompano weren't too great last year we had a pretty crappy uh, migration so hopefully this year we get some good pompano tarpon were through the roof best tarpon season i've ever seen i can't say much because i've only fished like three but it was way better than the p previous three years i fished what am i doing i don't even know what it okay now i'm starting to work on the rod <laughs> i'm kind of just sitting there but yeah, I um I really appreciate everybody who has helped me. Um, I can't emphasize that enough. There's a lot of people who have helped me be where I am. I can't say anything I've done has been self-taught. I have learned from the best, and that's truly grateful for that. There's a lot of helpful people here, and uh, don't be shy to ask for help and be humble. Try to stay humble. It's something I'm working on, but you gotta stay humble and. Just perfect what you're good you're good at and what you love to do you know I love to fish there's nothing that will ever hopefully prevent me from fishing man I'm literally not sane without fishing I gotta fish at least two to three four times a week it's what helps me be sane but uh, I love building rods <laughs> even though that's probably the main preface of this video I like uh, I like building rods. I like it's a really good feeling um, seeing somebody catch something on something you made, and you catching something on something you made. I know a lot of people make jigs in this community. I know a lot of people feel good when they catch something on something that they made with their hands. 
And I feel that way with my rods. Your rod, in my opinion, is your most important part of catching the fish. Your rod is everything. It's like an extension of your arm. That's what a rod should feel like. It should just feel so natural to you. So I love doing that for people. I love making something that they will use for their, hopefully their entire life. Um, rod building is probably one of my favorite uh, parts of like, let's say fishing related, but not actually fishing, if that makes sense. Like doing fishing stuff without fishing. <laughs> it's really cool going through, talking to companies and getting, um, talking to retailers and just people who love the hobby, looking at all of the components. It's, it's, it's so intriguing to see all these blanks and testing blanks and testing new guides and testing real seats and building and crafting something that you're proud of and you put time into. There's nothing quite like it. But, um, yeah, so that's what I like to do. On this build, I'm doing a rain shadow. I'm going to be going to a company that, uh, for some kayak rods called Thrasher. So down the map, y'all are going to see hopefully some kayak rods I will be able to sell to y'all. And um, it would mean a lot if y'all would support me with that. Um, but y'all don't have to support me by uh, buying rods. Supporting me is just um, give, leaving a nice comment or leaving a like. Um, that helps me a lot, you know. I really want to... I really kind of just like making fishing my job, you know. I work at a tackle store and I love it, you know. I love talking to people who love their hobbies. And fishing here in Navarre, Florida is I it, there's nothing quite like it the diversity of fish we have here I think is probably the best in the world there's so much different fish you can catch so close to land um, it's pretty crazy but unfortunately we're going to the end of this video kind of rambling but uh, I'll probably show some pictures and clips of the finished rod here at the end of the video but I hope you all enjoy. Thank you so very much. Goodbye. God bless.